Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano issued a long statement this week, about eight pages long, discussing Russia, Ukraine, NATO, globalism, the New World Order, Great Reset, all in one document. It's thick. It's a lot of information. Often I'll read the entire Archbishop Vigano statement. It's too long. It's too big. So today I'm just going to give some commentary about it. I'm not sharing my own personal opinion about it, but I am going to ask a number of questions today to challenge you, to challenge your thinking, and ultimately to exhort you to pray for a very evil, difficult, and complicated situation that's on planet Earth right now. Before we begin with our prayer, I'll just say, if you are not aware of Our Lady of Fatima, that's a Marian apparition that Catholics believe in. It's fully approved. It happened in 1917. If you don't believe in Our Lady of Fatima, a lot of what I'm going to say today will make zero sense. Because Our Lady of Fatima is an apparition calling for the world to pray the rosary, to convert the whole world to Jesus Christ through prayer, penance, the reality of hell, the reality of heaven, and also the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart. And back then in 1917, what we call today the Ukraine, the, that geographic region, Kiev Rus, was part of Russia. In other words, Ukraine is part of the consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart message. So if you don't know about that or you don't believe in that, or you believe that the consecration done by John Paul II was fully legit and in complete obedience to what Our Lady asked, today's podcast probably isn't for you. Maybe turn it off. Maybe ignore it. But if you do believe in Fatima, and you do believe that there's something going on with Russia and the Ukraine related to the Fatima message. See, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy fact. And you believe in what we call, what Vigano calls the deep state. And the deep church. That is that the church, the Catholic church, has been deeply infiltrated for for decades the more i study this the more i look into it the least the less i trust vatican officials not just today but in the teens and in the aughts and in the 90s i'm seeing so much more corruption now as i look through the lens so today we're going to look at vigano's analysis ask some questions. Is it fair? Is it accurate? Is it too much? And then uh, challenge one another to pray more, especially during this time of Lent, which is a time of penance, penance, penance. We'll begin with the Our Father in Latin, the Pater Noster. Oremus nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in celi sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Nomini Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Our Lady Fatima, pray for us. All right. As we get started here, I encourage everyone to like the video with the thumbs up, share the video on Facebook, your social media. Facebook is the best. And if you're new, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. Notably, I have a big podcast interview lined up for Monday. You're not going to want to miss this one. Very important. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure your bell is still lit up. That means you're going to get notified. It will not be at the normal 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. time that I podcast due to time zones. So make sure your notification bell is on. Check for that. And let's get started. Okay, Archbishop Vigano, this was on March 7th, the Feast of St. Thomas Aquinas in the traditional calendar. 
Uh, I've talked about that before, why Thomas Aquinas was on March 7th. That's when he died, March 7th. And it was transferred to January 28th. That's the day of the translation of his relics. But on that day, Archbishop Vigano issued a long statement, a thick statement, tons of information, in which, in the opening paragraphs, he says that there have been gross falsifications in the mainstream media. This has been a constant theme in Archbishop Vigano's analysis, that the mainstream media is in league with the deep state, the deep church, the new world order, the great reset. The great reset, in case you're new to this podcast, the great reset is the language that they use, that they talk about, globalist, in order to, just like you would reset a computer, reset society so that it will be secular, humanist, socialistic in its government, and ecumenical in its religion and philosophy. That And there's much more to it. But it's basically how do we destroy the previous epic, which is defined, especially in the West, Europe, and in America, and in this case, Russia. It's defined by Christianity defined by Christian morals, and it's defined by things that limit globalists. For example, uh, traditionally, Christianity has always been opposed to contraception, abortion, euthanasia, etc. So the only way that globalists can create their utopia, which will be a complete nightmare, is for them to push the button and reset. And... Archbishop Vigano and others have noted that the health situation, I'll just call it that, the health situation for the past two years or so has been part of an opportunity for globalist powers. We're talking about billionaires. We're talking about the techno arcs, the leaders, the, the dictators who own and control technology. They have been using the crisis for the last two years in order to get information on us, to bully us, to beat us down, and of course, to move us to take health measures that we may or may not want. That's been going on for two years. Now we have something that's that's kind of more affecting every person in their home. For example, you have to stay in your home. You have to wear the mask. You have to get this uh, into your body, etc. Now we're looking at more geopolitical maneuverings. And Archbishop Vigano is seeing this as a chessboard. And I think for people who are critical of Archbishop Vigano or didn't like this recent letter, I think what they're saying is, well, here, there's a bigger piece on the chessboard and it's killing and hurting and attacking a smaller piece. So that's definitely bad. And that's the situation. That is the situation. I'm not pro-Russia. I'm not pro-Ukraine. I am pro-human person. I think the people on the ground, whether they're in Russia or they're Ukraine or anywhere, United States, um, are not benefiting and are not advocating for the worldview, the agenda, the globalism that these politicians at the top are pushing. For example, Canada. I love Canadian people. I love Canada. I'm not real wild about Justin Trudeau because Justin Trudeau, just like Joe Biden, represents the elite globalist great reset culture that is trying to exert more and more of its power over you and me. As a Texan, I'm against that. Now, as we begin to understand who Joe Biden is and what his agenda is, Kamala Harris, Nancy Pelosi. And then we look north of our borders to Canada and we see Justin Trudeau. And then we see the major leaders, prime ministers and presidents of the EU nations. What do we see? We see socialism. We see secularism. We see hatred of Christianity, in particular, hatred of Catholicism, the manipulation of Catholicism, the infiltration of Catholicism, in a worldview that seeks to go beyond what we were in our tradition and to take on something that 
is transhuman, transgendered, trans everything. Again, I'm not pro-Putin. I'm against Putin. I think he is a criminal, cruel man who manipulates Christianity and the Russian people for money and power. Hear me say that. But then I also see things out there like this. This is President Zelensky, the president of the Ukraine. Here's his tweet. Quote, Justin Trudeau was one of those leaders who inspired me to join politics. Not going to lie, I'm not a big fan of that, President Zelensky. Justin Trudeau is a tyrant. He's an evil tyrant who is destroying the Canadian people and trying to push down the Canadian will for freedom. If he's the one who inspired you or one of the leaders that inspired you in your political agenda, I'm concerned. I'm also concerned that George Soros is such a big advocate for President Zelensky. There's a lot of people right now, I'm guessing, I haven't seen the live chat, who are like, oh my goodness, that Ukraine, yes, it's a horrible situation. I'm totally against all this. But we have to look at the leaders and the people and then the globalist chessboard that's going on. Does that make sense? The people particularly right now in the Ukraine, are being abused. Are being abused and hurt for a secular agenda driven by Putin and a secular agenda driven by, I believe, Zelensky. And a desire to make a secular Europe that is against Catholicism. Look at what they did to Ireland. Ireland was the most Catholic nation in Europe. You could say it was even more Catholic than Italy, where the Pope resides. And they crushed and pulverized Catholicism in Ireland. People will say, well, there was a lot of sexual abuse in the church in Ireland. That's true, too. But that itself is an infiltration of wickedness, of secularism, instead of true holiness and righteousness and piety into the ranks of the Irish hierarchy. They crushed Catholicism in Ireland. And my concern is they are trying to crush orthodoxy and Catholicism in the Ukraine. To move Ukraine more and more like France and Germany and Canada. Let's look at what Vigano says. He says, We realize that respect for each other's rights has been completely ignored. Indeed, we have the impression that the Biden administration, NATO, and the European Union deliberately want to maintain a situation of obvious imbalance precisely to make impossible any attempt at a peaceful resolution of the Ukrainian crisis provoking the Russian Federation to trigger a conflict. Now this, I don't know how to read this right here. He said it's a trap. He uses the word a trap. He says, Vigano, this is a trap set for both Russia and the Ukraine, using both of them to enable the globalist elite to carry out its criminal plan. And it might even be that those globalist great reset leaders are also in Russia. They're clearly in the Ukraine at the upper, upper corruption of the political movement. You have to ask yourself, President Zelensky, he was an actor. He was a dancer. And now he's at the center of this global crisis right now that's affecting you and me at the gas pumps. It's affecting energy. It's going to affect the cost of transporting groceries from state to state. It's going to cost the price of heating your home, cooling your home, running your refrigerator. All of these things are coming to you. And they increased minimum wage a little bit, and they sent you a couple checks for the past two years. But I tell you what, those things are not going to fill in the gap. We, the people, are getting played out. American people, Canadian people, European people, Ukrainian people. 
I don't know much about what's going on in Russia. I assume they're getting played out too. Archbishop Vigano says that basically what's going on here is the deep state, which has infiltrated almost all governments, does not want peace. When there's instability in countries, like there's instability in the United States, especially with the health situation, there was big time instability in Canada with the health situation, but also with the truckers. Whenever there's instability, that helps the billionaires, the globalists, and the technoarchs to gain power, to gain information, and to make us less powerful, less of a voice, less income, less savings. Archbishop Vigano also presents statements from George Soros, who has himself admitted that he is involved in Ukrainian politics. It's very important to him. Also, this is kind of controversial, but there's neo-Nazi forces that are incorporated, allegedly, into the Ukrainian army. What the heck is going on here? I wish I could Find out information. It's really hard to find information about this. But this is one of the things Archbishop Vigano talks about. And Archbishop Vigano is saying all of these are clues or signs that, that something's not right. The puppet masters on high are pulling strings. And we're constantly getting told a narrative by the same media that has been giving us a false narrative for at least two years. And we all know it's been now more than two years. Vigano shares a quote from Kira Rudik from the Ukrainian parliament. She told Fox News, we know that we are not just fighting for Ukraine, but also fighting for the new world order. What? What? And this goes back to Fatima. Russia shall spread her errors throughout the earth. And the errors are you don't need the church. You don't need the seven sacraments. You don't need Jesus Christ. You don't need a redeemer bleeding and dying on the cross for you and rising on the third day. You don't need baptism. You don't need a pope or a priesthood. What you need to replace the priesthood is a cast of politicians, billionaires, and technology rulers. We are your new priesthood. We will make you happy. You will own nothing. You will have nothing. And we will make you happy through programs. So Archbishop Vigano is really, I think, po pointing the finger to what he calls the oligarchs, that caste that's forming above us. That can literally, right now, that, that cast of techno dictators could right now push a button and cancel my conversation with you right now. They can cancel you on Facebook or Twitter. They can, as we saw in Canada, freeze your checking account instantly where you would have no recourse whatsoever. This is what they want. And they don't want you going to church. They don't want you having Christian convictions. They want you to be addicted to pornography, addicted to Percocet, addicted to Xanax. They want you smoking legalized marijuana. And by the way, President Zelensky of the Ukraine is all about legalized cannabis. He's all about, I'm going to have to use careful words here, pro-choice, though I don't agree with that word. He's all about marriage, matrimony for unnatural relations. In other words, on all the issues, President Zelensky of the Ukraine is in agreement with Justin Trudeau and Joe Biden. 
politically, morally. And I want you to I want you to hear very carefully. I'm not saying anything about negative about the Ukraine. I love the Ukrainian people. I love Ukraine. I had dinner with a Ukrainian last night. Lovely, good people. Love the Ukraine. I think this is horrible what's happening to them. But the leadership. I mean, ask yourself. President Zelensky is a is secular and of the Jewish religion. How is it that someone who is secular and Jewish is the leader of a country that is fervently Eastern Orthodox and Catholic and is promoting an agenda, a political agenda, and a morality that is pro LGBT LMNOP, pro legalized bringing the end of life in the womb. I have to be careful how I speak. Pro cannabis, pro all these things, and yet he's the leader of a country that in their faith, in their piety, and in their morality are opposed to these sins. Something wicked. People are saying, have you seen President Zelensky dancing in the high heels? Yes, I have. Thought about running the clip. I was like, you know what? It's just immodest. It's impure. It's gross and weird. I'm not going to run the clip of President Zelensky doing weird dancing in high heels. It's gross and weird. But again, that shows we're dealing with a secular humanist leader. Not a man who is inspired by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the message of the gospel, um, love for the poor, sacrifice for the poor, exalting the traditional family, the nuclear family of a father and a mother and the children. We're dealing with leaders who are in the mold of Justin Trudeau, as President Zelensky said. Justin Trudeau was one of the leaders who inspired me to join politics. What else did Archbishop Vigano say? He says to the good Ukrainian people who are suffering, who are having to leave their homes cross across many borders. They're going to Poland. They're coming to America to escape war, battle, bombings, threats, children, mothers, elderly in the Ukraine are endangered by this nonsense that for the oligarchs, for the billionaires and the globalists and the technological leaders, for them, it's all about the price of oil moving goods, container ships, things like that. And Archbishop Vigano says, you know, to the good people of the Ukrainian, the Ukrainian people, look at the EU. Yes, they get sort of this semblance of prosperity. But at what cost? The deal is, you get NATO, but you have to reject God. That's the deal. You get checks from the government and pretty cities and a false peace, but you have to sell your soul. You have to give up your spirit. What makes you Ukrainian? The, the lovely icons hanging on your wall. That devotion to the Theotokos, all that needs to be, tur turn the volume down. 
you get Social Security, but in order to get Social Security and Medicare, you, you also have to agree to contraception, abortion, and euthanasia. That's the deal. Deal or no deal? No deal. Remember the, the old the game show, Deal or No Deal? That's where uh, Prince Harry's wife got started, didn't it? Didn't she? Deal or No Deal? She was a, suit, a suitcase holder. Look it up. And Archbishop Vigano, whether you agree with him or not, says, look, the the future is Christ. The future is the family. The future is morality. If you don't have a, if you don't have families, you don't have faith, you don't have a future. If everybody contracepts and aborts the babies they have, humanity comes to a screeching halt. There is no future for humanity if we all contracept, if we all sit in our rooms and in our cubicles and we watch, we binge stream Netflix and Amazon and play video games and just look at a screen and vape THC and take Percocet and Xanax and all these pills. If we do all of that and we don't have families, we don't have spouses, we don't have kids, we don't go to church, humanity ends. The billionaires will still have their yachts and their 12 houses. They'll still get to go on their private planes without wearing masks, without passports, to have vaccine, vaccine info on, whatever. They'll get to have their special life, but everyone else is just going to be kind of put into a pod um, with one of these ocular things on their face, doing the metaverse and doing drugs. It sucks. I don't want that. I want to have picnics. I want to have Easter egg hunts with my kids and I want to go to, you know, Easter vigil mass and midnight mass at Christmas. And I want to celebrate the feast days and have beautiful traditional Latin mass weddings and baptisms and confirmations and anniversaries. That's what I want to do. That's the future. The fake gospel of Europe and the fake gospel of Joe Biden and George Soros and all those people is totally opposed to everything I just said. No more, ba- no more babies, no more baptisms, no more marriages, no more anniversaries, no more Easter and Christmas and the beautiful rhythm of Christian life. Obliterated. Obliterated. As you can tell in this podcast today, I'm not talking about Ukraine versus Russia. I'm talking about God versus the world. Christ versus the pagan nations. Wars will just, as people deny God, wars will just increase. People say, oh, religion caused all the wars. Baloney. Religion has ended So many wars and the bloodiest wars, the most people killed, Chairman Mao, China, Russia, Stalin, communists, atheists, secularists, kill, kill, kill. They don't believe in human dignity. So these independent nations with their own identity, their own genius, like Poland, I love Poland. will be whittled away. They will become shapeless. They will become the EU, the European Union. Think of all that's great about a place like Austria. Or think about the genius of Italy. It's great. I don't want Italy to be muted or turned down or to become more English. No, I don't like that. I want Italy to be Italy, and I want Ukraine to be Ukraine. And Russia to be Russia. Catholic Russia. That's why we need to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart. That's what's beautiful about Catholicism, is although we had Christendom, although we had an integration between church and state, which had difficulties, but for the most part worked out really well for a thousand years or more. 
unlike Islam, which just, ha- you know, it's all just, there is no church and state. It's all kind of the same thing. You know, under Christendom, you had the Pope, but you also had the French king. You had the Holy Roman Emperor, and you had the English king, and you had a Scottish king, and you had a Spanish and Portuguese, and all these brothers and sisters living together under the canopy, under the household of Christ and his vicar on earth, the Pope. Fantastic. So the problem is, is that the national identity will fade away. And with that, the faith of the people, their families and their traditions will fade away. We're told that being pro your nation is being a nationalist and being a nationalist for them is basically just being a Nazi. If I think America is great, I'm pro America. For them, they think that's bad. They say, you got to be pro global. You got to be for the whole globe. But that's not right. That's not Catholic. I'm a marshal. I love to see my parents or my brother and sister thrive and win, be successful, their children be successful, my children be successful, my wife succeed and accomplish her goals. That makes me rejoice. I am happy. I rejoice in being a marshal because of their biological proximity to me. And that's wonderful. I'm totally, I want all kids to make A's at school. Yes, it's awesome. But I get really excited when my kids make A's because they're my kids. I want the whole world to be successful and prosperous. But I'm really happy when America, or even closer, Texas, is successful, has a win. That's just reality. And there's nothing wrong with that. The Catholic Church has never condemned that. They realize that that is good and it's natural. In fact, when you read the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation, it talks about Christ redeeming every tribe, tongue, and nation. And they're redeemed as a tribe, as a nation. There's not this idea, okay, well, now your nation has become Catholic, so we're going to go ahead and erase everything that is your nation, and you now join the big glob. No, we're like, oh, y'all are Ethiopian. Okay, well, y'all be e- y'all be Catholic in the Ethiopian part of the world, in the Ethiopian way, and we love that. That's great. Or the Brazilian way. That's Catholic. Globalists want everyone to wear the same stupid tennis shoes and the same pair of jeans and be on the same Facebook and Twitter, and watch the same silly movies streamed on Netflix, play the same video games, and watch the same sports teams all at the same time. It's boring. It's lame. And the reason they want that is they want a broken people and they want more money. All right, let's talk about Fatima. Our Lady of Fatima. Our Lady Fatima appeared in 1917. Why that year? Well, the old ancestral dynasties of the Catholic monarchies were being systematically snuffed out. Lots of pressure on them in the 1800s. World War I, you could almost rename World War I the War to End Monarchy. World War I destroyed the monarchies of Europe. You have sort of the the last emperor of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, Blessed Karl of Austria. Beautiful, holy man. At my fraternity of St. Peter Parish, we have a relic in a shrine, a little altar shrine, where a relic of Blessed Karl is with the Austrian insignia. I often kneel there and pray and say, make me a good man, blessed Carl. Make me a father like you. He represents the end. In a way, I think, might be wrong on this, blessed Carl, sort of the end of the monarchy, which is really kind of the end of the nobility 
the structure of the Roman Empire is kind of the taking away of the catacomb. In 2 Thessalonians, where Paul talks about how there's iniquity in the world and it's being held back, withheld by something. The Greek is catacomb. And if that's the case, that means we are headed into the end times. If that's the case. So we see sort of this dissolution of what was Europe, of what was Christendom in 1917. Remember, you go back to the starting of Martin Luther, 1517, 1521. I mean, you're at a 400-year watermark. And the structures of Christendom, the structures of Christianity and, and Catholicism are broken and snuffed out. And what do we get during, and, and on Russia too? You know the whole story of Rasputin, and then they come in and they kill the, the Russian emperor, the czar, and his wife, and his kids, and it's a horrible story. Betrayal. What happens after 1917? This is why Our Lady came down in 1917. We see secular states pretending to be governed by democracy, which we're learning more and more is kind of a sham. What's really governing these nations are the billionaires, the rich, the oligarchs, who manipulate elections so that people think they have a say. It's frustrating. This, by the way, is kind of like the synod of synodality that Pope Francis is pushing in Rome. It's just, they're calling the shots, but then they have these little synods in every diocese where everyone gets to say, well, I think the Catholic Church should be this. Well, I think the Catholic Church should be this. Well, I think women should be deacons. Why? Well, and everybody gets to pipe up and say what they want to say. It's this feeling of empowering the people when the people at the top already know what they're going to do in their agenda. But from the 1917 to our time, for the past hundred years, we have seen secular, humanist, anti-God governments set up throughout the world. No more integration of Christian morality, Christian gospel, prayer, Images of the cross and of Jesus Christ, the Blessed Mother, all of that's come to a stop in the public square, in the civic square. And we see secular nations. Canada had so many Catholics, such a beautiful Catholic culture, destroyed. America in the 1950s was producing a strong and powerful Catholic group that would have become the majority and influential in America. Destroyed it. We already talked about Ireland. Spain, post-Franco, destroyed the Catholic strength, Catholic identity, gone. France, same thing. Italy, I could go on and on. Just throw a dart at the map of Europe. Same story. And then, of course, we had a deep infiltration in the church. 1950s, 1960s. Second Vatican Council that basically said Catholic culture, you know, not eating meat on Friday and outward displays of piety. Processions, Marian processions. No longer needed, no longer important. Centrality, the papacy, the tiara, take it off. The language, Latin, get rid of it. Be normal. Be secular. Fit in. And of course, Vatican II repudiated the previous teaching of the Catholic Church, which was the only religion that has a right to exist 
in a nation is the Catholic religion because God gives all rights. And error and heresy does not have rights. The Lutheran religion, which was made up by Martin Luther, does not have any rights given to it by God Almighty because God Almighty is against the Lutheran heresies. They're not good for people. It's not good to tell people that it's still bread and it's still wine and you're justified by faith alone and not by works and not by charity. That's bad for people. God does not give any rights to that false religion. And yet, in Vatican II, we have this whole idea that everyone has a right to follow false religions. How can this be? It's the dissolution, the dissolving of Catholic culture. And that's one thing that Archbishop Vigano does well. He understands, you know, he warned us in America that the occult fortune cookie is Solve et coagula, which is Latin, dissolve and build back together, build back better, to use the words of Biden. And that's tattooed on Baphomet's forearms. It's tattooed on Jay, uh, what's her name? Uh, Harry Potter woman. Can't remember her name. It's tattooed on Marilyn Manson. Rowling, J.K. Rowling. It's tattooed on her wrist. This is what they want. So, everyone watching, I'm going to ask you, Zelensky and Putin and all that, I'm just going to put our mo blessed mother here on the screen. Imagine she comes to you, because she did come to you in 1917. You weren't, weren't alive, I wasn't alive, we weren't even conceived yet. We were just twinkles in our great-granddaddy's eyes back then. She comes to you and says... Russia has problems. Ukraine has problems. Pick a country. Ireland has problems. Canada has problems. America has problems. I have a solution for you. It'll fix these things. The solution is consecrate Russia to my immaculate heart and pray the rosary every day and go to the first five Saturdays for Mass, Confession. Love my son, Jesus Christ. Be a penitential, humble person. End quote. That's the message. It's a gospel message. It's a message of prayer and penance and fasting. It's the message of John the Baptist. It's the message of her son, her divine son, Jesus Christ. Be humble. Fast, pray. Consecrate that which is evil to God in her honor. A few shows back, I talked about why did Mary in 1917 appear on May 13th? Why that day? And then every 13th after that, except for one month. Why May 13th? And the reason is, is because Pope Boniface consecrated the Pantheon, which was the temple of all the gods, the most wicked, demonic sanctuary in Rome. Pope Boniface consecrated that to the Blessed Virgin Mary on May 13th. I'm not a pope. You're not a pope. We need to be praying that these wicked things, wicked temples, wicked nations, I shouldn't say wicked nations. I should say wicked ideologies. I don't want to say the Russians are a wicked people. But the ideology that was pushed upon them and enculturated in their nation under Stalin, truly wicked, truly hurt the world. The reason China is communist is because of Stalin. Think about the billions of people. North Korea, because of Stalin. North Vietnam, because of Stalin. Cuba, because of Stalin. Think about the global problems that we've experienced in the last 100 years because of Russia. And then, wow, the Catholic Church teaches that Mary came in 1917 and said, Russia's going to be a problem. 
I mean, that right there is proof that Catholicism is true. So there she is. That's the message. And then I want to ask you, do you accept the message? Are you going to be a person who's pro-family, pro-child, pro-church, pro-holy and good liturgy, pro-Roman and the things that are holy and Catholic about Rome, not what is pagan? That right there, through the blood of Christ and the blood of Peter and Paul in Rome, consecrated Rome to be the mother and the teacher and the capital of Christendom. That's how things work. So do you take the deal? Deal or no deal? Do you take the Fatima deal from Our Lady? I say take the deal. Let's take the deal. What does that mean for you personally? It means you have to pray the rosary every single day. And carry a rosary with you all the time. I was reading the Recolta last night. That's the old indulgence handbook before Vatican II. You should own it. It's great. And I think it said, I can't remember the days. You get 500 days indulgence if you carry a rosary on your person and kiss it and say Hail Mary once a day. Just by having it on you. That's cool. See, we've lost so much as Catholics. But deal or no deal, do you take the deal? Are you going to pray the rosary every day? Are you going to teach your kids to pray the rosary? Are you going to find a traditional mass? Are you going to reorient everything in your life to Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul, for the salvation of your family, and for the redemption of human society? I don't want George Soros' idea to redeem my society and my family. I want King Jesus Christ, his ideas, his message, his morality, and his gospels to redeem my family and to reconstitute my society. That's a society that I want to live in. I don't want to live in George Soros society. And I don't think you do either. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure you pray that rosary every day or you're not on the team. That is the team trying to answer the message of Our Lady of Fatima in 1917. Back to Archbishop Vigano. Do you agree with him? Disagree with him? I don't know. I do think that the media and the globalists and the billionaires are playing us like a fiddle. And we need to wake up. I also know I feel bad for the Ukrainian people. It's a horrible situation. And I want to ask everyone to make sure that you're praying every day for the Ukrainian people, for their physical well-being and their spiritual well-being. And that's rosary time. You can say as the dad and your family, the father figure, uh, for the third sorrowful mystery, we're going to pray for the Ukrainian people for a peaceful outcome. You can do that. You should do that. Deal or no deal. Take the deal. All right, we're going to close with a Hail Mary in Latin. Oremus nomini patri et fidi et spiritus sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pronobis peccatoribus, nunc et et ora mortis nostre. Amen. Nomini patri et fidi et spiritus sancti. Amen. Arlea Fatima, pray for us. All right, friends, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it that thumbs up, share it on Facebook. And of course, if you aren't subscribed, why aren't you subscribed? You should be subscribed. Go ahead and hit the subscription button and make sure you hit the bell because there's a big interview on Monday, big interview coming on Monday. And I want you to see it. Hopefully be there live. It'll, it'll be in the morning on Monday. God willing, there's no problems. Pray that rosary every day. Find a traditional Latin mass. If you're an Eastern Catholic, find a good traditional Eastern divine liturgy. Read the Bible every day. I hope everybody reading the Bible is doing well. Um, I'm a little behind, actually. I need to catch up. 
And thanks to everybody who supports the channel on Patreon. If you want to support the work I'm doing, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. And uh, there's some signed books and other cool things and giveaways and rosaries and things like that. Um, so sign up, patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. Until next time, remember our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and